Are you going to be standing there? What? Are you going to be standing there? What? Are you going to be standing there? Hold on. Okay, what? Are you going to be standing there? Yeah, well, of course. Okay. Hey guys, welcome to Gear Tasting. Today I'm going to start off talking about how I finally installed the Unity Tactical Serra adapters to my Sword and Ear Pro so that I could basically interact with these Peltor Arc Rail adapters into the helmet so that I wouldn't have to wear the basically the hearing protection cover over the head band per se inside the helmet when I'm wearing it. So that's what I wanted to start off with today. Um, First off, I wanted to say that the install for this is a little tricky. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world, and that basically comes from the snap rings. And if you've ever seen snap rings, you need little pliers like this to uh, be able to interact with those snap rings. So if you're thinking about this project, you definitely need to pick up a pair of snap rings. They're probably the worst invention ever in the history of um, ways to attach things. They're, they're a pain in the butt. I wound up stretching out one of the snap rings, finally got them. You almost need another set of hands to help you with them. They're just, they're just a total pain, and I'll show you what we're talking about. So the way this is here, uh, when you open up this ear pro, and first off, let me, I'm gonna take off this hearing protection cover real quick. These are the OC Tactical hearing protection covers that we sell. So this is what I'm talking about. So when you take off the hearing protection cover, you've got, you know, kind of the over the head thing. And the way this works is that you are able to unscrew these. So I'll go ahead and take off the over the head cover. I don't even know what the heck to call this. I can over the head. I don't know. Anyway, taking it off. So by loosening these little set screws on the side, you can slip these off. And this is what those little Sara adapters like this allow you to do, is that it's basically a replacement. So inside of these, and it's easier to see inside the one that's the non-battery side. I can snap that back off without breaking it. There it goes. So these are the gel inserts too for Sordens. I would highly recommend these. Uh, these are Probably one of the best things that you can buy for upgrades on the Sordens. I swear by these things. They're super comfortable, especially if you're wearing uh, Ear Pro all day long. They're great. So inside of here are, is the electronics panel, and the one with the battery is a little, there's a little less space to, to work with here. But it may be hard to see. There's a little snap ring that's on each side of these. And the way this worked is that until I snap or cut these off, these little end pieces here had this little curly cue that kind of worked itself around this post. So basically you remove that from the post and then you install these Sara adapters to the post. So all you're left with now are the, the Sara adapters and you can basically go in and out between the over the head band like that or the these things which interact with the, the helmet, the, the arc rail adapters from Peltor. So these are the authentic ones too. They're made for Peltors and they come with these little adapters that you have to kind of pull off the end of these. But they're made to easily slip onto Peltors. It's not as much of a pain in the butt if you have Peltors versus Sordens. There's a lot more work that goes into uh, making these work with Sordens. Obviously you have to, you know, purchase these Unity Serra adapters. These are you know, a good 60 to 70 bucks by themselves. Um, in addition to these, which are another $50. So, you know, all in you're a little over a hundred bucks to make these interact with a helmet without having to keep the, uh, the head strap on there. So it's, uh, it's up to you whether you decide whether it's worth it or not to you to, to do this upgrade. But I like the versatility it gives you. And once I put these back on, I'll kind of show you how that works. But I wanted to little show you a little bit of the inside of these where those snap rings were. So the way that you know snap wing rings work is you're just using these pliers to open up that that ring and slide out the pin and replace 
uh, or to put this uh, adapter, the Sarah adapter, onto each stem of this and then put everything back together again. So it can be kind of a pain in the butt to get it all done, but once it's done, it's done. And it just offers you more versatility because you can move back and forth between the two systems. So now I'm going to put these on. And some people have cut these. I haven't found that I really need to cut them. I just push them all the way down to the bottom when I put them together here. So once you engage that, do the same thing to this side. Okay, so once you have those put together, all you're left with now is the wire that goes across. So if I were to put this into a helmet, which I have here, the way that I would make this work is that I like to run my, uh, my speakers to the rear when I do this. So those speakers would go towards the back side of the helmet, so that's how I'm going to configure them here. So I would run this underneath, and this is an OpsCore helmet you have one of these, you're kind of familiar with, with what you have to do with one of these. But so I would be running the headband under this as well if I, if I had this uh, set up normally here. All right, so basically once you have it set up in this configuration, you're going to install them onto the rails. pretty easy to do. So it clips on or it snaps in. It's got a little detent here that locks it in. But if you just lift up on this, it allows you to, to move it back and forth into the optimal position here where you need it. So once I do that to the other side here, So that's basically what it looks like installed. And you can snap these out, just like so, and that kind of sets them off your ear. So if I was going to put this on, this is the way it would look. And right now they're set off from my ear so I can hear pretty well, but if I snap these in, just like that. Now I have to really turn the ear pro on because I can't hear anything. So now I can hear. Now that's configured in the right way. And if I need to snap them off, I can just rotate them. Obviously, if I had the helmet on correctly, I could just rotate them to the rear. And now the ear pro is not engaged. Um, I can turn them off so they don't provide feedback. But that's kind of what you can do with these. So now I can just rotate them back into place, snap them in again, just like before. You know, if I need to now get my ear pro out of the way, I just have to lift and twist, which is a pretty neat idea. Um, I love the, the ability to do that because it's, it's just so much better than having to take your, your whole helmet off to, to basically remove your ear pro if you're sitting around for an extended period of time or something like that. So that's kind of the gist of these. I wanted to at least walk through kind of the, the methodology behind it and, and what you can do with the combination between the, the Peltor arc adapters and the Unity Serra mounts or adapters. One last thing that I wanted to say is that, as I'm sure you noticed, that once you actually snap these off with a, a bolt cutter, it does become a permanent mod because you can never go back to the way this was unless you had a spare. So just wanted to add that in. All right, let's get to some questions over coffee. The first one comes from Chris M on Facebook. It says, I'm looking at a pair of your 
ITS lapel daggers. I've never used a glass filled nylon knife before. How are they compared to steel? So these are our lapel daggers. They each come with a glass filled nylon sheath, just like so. And if I were to compare these, they're very identical in terms of the size and makeup, but one is steel, so one is going to have a magnetic signature versus a non-magnetic signature. The other big difference is that one is sterile and one has our logo engraved on the back, so that's a big difference too. And then weight. I mean, they obviously have completely different weights. The glass-filled nylon is very lightweight, so it's going to be you know, lighter to carry and things like that, so, which makes it a little easier to conceal in my opinion. Uh, and then on the steel dagger, we've got one side that's sharpened versus a non-sharpened side, and that's to uh, just comply with a lot of local laws that have, you know, turn these into daggers if they've got two sharpened edges. And uh, if you're at all interested in knife law and things like that, I would definitely look at knifewrites.org. They do a lot of things over there that are very pro-knife. Uh, they've been able to lobby the government for a lot of changes in a lot of different states. So they're, they're really doing some great stuff over there. And Doug Ritter is a part of that. Uh, if you know who Doug Ritter is, he's a big advocate or proponent for knife rights. So I will put the link in the description so you can kind of check that out too. I highly encourage you to do that. So and then each of the glass filled nylon sheaths has 14 different holes so you can sew these into things. So if I were to take a sport coat, which I just kind of have handy of some photos we do. Seriously, I don't keep a sport coat around the video table. But anyway, you can take the sheath like this and you can sew it into a jacket lapel just like so. Yeah, so that it would be easily concealable. And then all you do, the sheath would be obviously stuck to the lapel of the jacket and you just pull out the lapel dagger. So these are based on the old OSS lapel daggers. Uh, kind of made famous for breaking contact and things like that and being able to conceal easily in the event of needing to break contact. So that's kind of why we designed one with a, a glass filled uh, non-magnetic signature and then one with a sharpened edge. Okay, this next question comes from Zap over Twitter. I don't think I've ever seen a discussion about secure comms, possible for gear tasting perhaps. So. Secure communications are interesting. We live in a, a different time in technology, an interesting time for sure. Um, perhaps one day we are going to get to full secure communications. I don't know if we ever will or not, but the, the deal is you're kind of beholden to the company providing the service for you. So uh, with like Silent Circle, FaceTime, iMessage, things like that, Apple says it offers end-to-end -end encryption, but you're really beholden to that company. So you it's only as good as they want to provide to you. you there's really no i don't know i would say there's no warranty against them turning that information over if they ever had to so um and i know apple got into a big battle not too long ago about protecting our privacy which i really appreciate as a company but at the same time you're just never 100 percent on anything these days so outside of like military grade encryption I just really don't know what exists out there on the marketplace outside of things like that. Um, there's PGP encryption for email and things like that. I've even read some vulnerabilities on, on that type of um, encryption too. So if you guys out there know of some different things to contribute to that discussion, please leave it in the comments. I'm not going to claim to know everything about that and maybe there's some things I'm overlooking. So hopefully you guys can add to it. Hey guys, before we do the closing, I wanted to quickly mention that we have a sale in the ITS store. 15% off everything with the coupon code DADBOD through Father's Day. Wanted to get that over with before I got into the outro because I can't do both at the same time. It's like chewing gum and walking. Can't do it. So use the pound tag irritating on any social media network and we'll get your questions answered here on the show. And as always, if you like what we're doing, please consider joining as a crew leader and our membership and allow us to give you back something in return. Details are below. And always check out the store while you're at it. Just mention that coupon code. So maybe there's something for you and your dad bod.